Men are abandoning higher education in such numbers that they now trail female college students by record levels. At the close of the 2020-2021 academic year, women made up 59.5% of college students, an all-time high, and men, 40.5%, according to enrollment data from the National Student Clearinghouse, a nonprofit research group. U.S. colleges and universities had 1.5 million fewer students compared with five years ago, and men accounted for 71% of the decline. This education gap, which holds at both two- and four-year colleges, has been slowly widening for 40 years. The divergence increases at graduation. After six years of college, 65% of women in the U.S. who started a four-year university in 2012 received diplomas by 2018, compared with 59% of men during the same period, according to the U.S. Department of Education. The statistics are astounding. Education experts and historians, on the other hand, are unsurprised. Since the mid-1980s, women have earned more bachelor's degrees than men in the United States. This particular gender gap hasn't made headlines in about 40 years. However, the disparity reveals a genuine shift in men's participation in education, the economy, and society. The world has changed dramatically, but masculinity ideology has not changed quickly enough to keep up. For decades, women in the United States have been told that the path to independence and empowerment leads through school. Women have barnstormed into colleges, despite the fact that they're still playing catch-up in the labor force, and that leadership positions such as chief executive and senator are still dominated by men. That is the very definition of advancement. Girls have no educational advantage in poorer countries where women are generally subjugated or do not have access to regular schooling. Still. Gender inequality on something as important as education presents problems, no matter what direction the inequality points in. ...is the college experience for kids currently at school, kids on their way to school, because if you've got 60% women on campus, 40% men, that's an imbalance, right? Uh, are, are schools going to have to start favoring men, as weird as that sounds, to bring them in? While men are more likely to go to college than they were 10 years ago, something seems to be restraining the growth of male enrollment. In 1970, men accounted for 59% of college and university students. Two years later, Congress passed Title IX regulations that prohibited sex-based discrimination in any school that received federal funding. This is Richard Reeves, a senior fellow in economic studies. His research focuses on the middle class, inequality, and social mobility. He stated that, um, I'm a bit more with uh, my Georgetown colleague, Anthony Carnavali, who describes the uh, college system in the US uh, as a uh, a mission, an engine of inequality. The U.S. education gender gap isn't just a college phenomena. Long before female students outnumbered men on university campuses, they outperform boys in high school. Girls in elementary school spend more time studying than boys, are less likely to misbehave than boys, and get better grades than boys across all major subjects. For decades, Guys have been less likely to graduate from high school, less likely to enroll in college immediately, and less likely to finish college and earn a diploma. There is a linear educational trajectory for girls and women. Boys and men tend to zigzag their way through adolescence. In the next few years, two women will earn a college degree for every man if the trend continues. No reversal is in sight. Women increased their lead over men in college applications for the 2021-22 school year, 3.8 million to 2.8 million, by nearly a percentage point compared with the previous academic year, according to Common Application, a nonprofit that transmits applications to more than 900 schools. American colleges, which are embroiled in debates over racial and gender equality, and working on ways to reduce sexual assault and harassment of women on campus, have yet to reach a consensus on what might slow the retreat of men from higher education. Men in interviews around the U.S. said they quit school or didn't enroll because they didn't see enough value in a college degree for all the effort and expense required to earn one. Many said they wanted to make money after high school. Men dominate top positions in industry, finance, politics, and entertainment. They also hold a majority of tenured faculty positions and run most U.S. college campuses. Yet, female college students are running laps around their male counterparts. But the fraction who will ever gra graduate from what we call a four-year college 
is now about 45% for women, and it's about 36% for men. This is Claudia Golden, a historian and economics professor at Harvard University. She stated that the college gender gap is happening not just in the U.S., but in a range of upper- and middle-income countries, including France, Slovenia, Mexico, and Brazil. In almost every rich country, women earn the majority of bachelor's degrees. As a general rule, almost every country that gives men and women equal access to education discovers, within a few decades, that women are doing better. Historically, Men have been more likely to drop out of school to work in hot economies, whether it's in the factories of World War II or the fracking mines of the Dakotas. I don't know for sure if testosterone's effect on impulsiveness and risk is the key player here, but men's higher likelihood to drop out of college for perceived short-term gains in the labor force might tell us men are more likely to do risky things. It is safer, we think, to say that some blend of variables, including economic, cultural, and biological factors, has created a scenario in which girls and women are more firmly attached to the education pipeline than men in the U.S. and across the developed world. The Wall Street Journal reports that some colleges are putting their finger on the scale for male applicants to avoid having their schools become 70% female. The pivot point is in adolescence, and the foundation is laid in the early grades. This gender gap is an economic story, a cultural story, a criminal justice story, and a family structure story that begins to unfold in elementary school. The attention-grabbing statistic that barely 40% of college grads are men seems to cry out for an immediate policy response. But rather than dial up male attendance one college admissions department at a time, policymakers should think about the social forces that make the statistic inevitable.